Thank you. Right, good evening, our Life with Faith. Thank you for joining us. It's a Friday night, um, so we're going to let you get to the weekend a little earlier and do a quicker show today, but we have two very important guests and the topic is of great importance. Now, the reason why we only have two speakers today is because we want to be able to give them even more time to speak, to be able to explain to us what is really going on with the economy. I was having a chat uh, a little while ago about approval ratings in politics and, you know, uh, Sachin Pilot and Ashok Gehlot and everything else that's happening, but really, the economy should be our prime concern because um, if the economy continues to spiral downwards the way it is doing right now, none of us will have jobs. And then it doesn't matter what happens in politics. It doesn't matter what happens anywhere else. This is the biggest story unfolding in the country right now. So I believe that there are three big crises or challenges before us as a country as we go into Independence Day. Challenge number one, obviously, is the health crisis with COVID. We are now pushing to be right the second most affected country in the world. And that is not a uh, you know, particular position we should be vying for. The second challenge is the economy and the outcome of what has happened with COVID and the lockdowns. And the third challenge is China and the LAC. And the fact that China is still being very active in standing its ground on our land in the LAC and not enough is being said or talked about it. The fact that we're looking the other way with the media as well uh, might not be a very good thing. So today we're going to look at the economy. And there's a reason why we're looking at the economy. And let me just put up some of the things on your screen. Now, over the course of this week, Dr. Manmohan Singh, um, the former prime minister, former finance minister, former RBI governor, um, had actually written in, in an email response to uh, the BBC he said that India is inevitably going to face a long-term slowdown. He said it was inevitable. Uh, he also said the government must take steps immediately to stem the damage of Corona pandemic. Uh, and some of the things that he said were fairly worrying. He said that uh, you know there has to be more spending to ensure livelihoods are protected. And uh, we'll get into the details of the three steps that he suggested to the government, but his outlook on the, on the economy was actually something that made me personally very nervous for, uh, you know, to actually suggest that. The other thing that I want to put up is the uh, Prime Minister's economic advisor saying that the economy may shrink five to 7%, a massive infrastructure push is needed. Um, of course, some uh, analysts will argue that even the five to 7% that he's put up right now is an underestimate of what is actually happening is likely to be much, much worse. But even so, this is an official acknowledgement from government that we might be in some form of trouble. The third piece of information that I want to put up for you comes from Info former Enforcers founder Narayan Murthy, who has said India's GDP is expected to shrink by at least 5% and the economy should be brought back on track and people should be prepared to live with COVID. Uh, flagging fears that the country's GDP may even touch its lowest since independence. So Narayan Murthy fears that the GDP growth could hit its lowest since 1947. And that now that should really cause us concern. What is common in all three of these articles is a suggestion that the government needs to, on priority, do something immediately. Is that happening? Are we reading enough about it? Let's see what we've read this week. We've read that the finance minister has announced more credit socks, more availability of loans for people. Um, is that enough? Is that something that will solve the problems? Because what these experts are talking about, including the PM's advisor, is a massive infrastructure push. Dr. Manmohan Singh has talked about uh, putting money in the hands of people directly into their bank accounts. And of course, Narayan Muthi offering his suggestions as well. Today, joining me on the show this evening, I have two guests, um, Mr. Ajay Bhakka, who is an expert in the markets and, and investments and finance, and Professor Arun Kumar, who is an economist, a voice that I respect a great deal. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. It is, a, it, it is very kind of you to give us time and to agree uh, to be with us. If I may please start with Professor Kumar. Professor Kumar, um, I've placed before the audience now these three voices that we've heard saying that the government needs to do something immediately. I want to understand from you, when you're in Delhi, um, do you believe that enough is being done? I mean, is this a priority for the government? Because we're not reading enough about it in the news, at least in the rest of the country. So, you know, the situation is quite dire. You know, uh, even now in July, August, uh, things have not really come back to where they were in January 2020. 
and all predictions are that they are not likely to be back to that position uh, for at least a year or so because investment perceptions have gone down and consumption confidence has gone down so consumption is not reviving and that requires you know people to have incomes and large number of people in the unorganized sector uh, have lost employment uh, there is some revival of employment no doubt as industry picks up as services pick up but that's not enough so we need to put purchasing power in the hands of the uh, poor people because if they begin to demand more then the demand for industry would go up as we've seen the demand for the rural employment guarantee scheme has shot up you know uh, in the first 2 to 3 months you know uh, there has been a greater you know expenditure by a factor of 3 and 4 so the annual budget has got exhausted in many parts of the country by uh, this kind of a factor so you know in a sense you know the government needs to put more purchasing power into the hands of the poor people that's for one uh, second is businesses you know are likely to fail at a fairly large level because of the fact that you know demand is not picked up so according to all india manufacturers organization 30% of businesses could fail and according to confederation of all india traders association 30% of retail traders could fail now that's a huge number you know if that kind of failure takes place then the economy would not recover quickly so as i've been arguing economy is not like a rubber ball which you throw on the ground and bounces back to you there are real costs involved there are people who get unemployed people lose incomes you know businesses fail uh investment slows down because capacity utilization is low and especially in the services sector capacity utilization is not coming up because in the services sector you have to be close to people and this is what you want to avoid because of physical distancing so whether it be the airlines industry airports whether it be hotels restaurants whether it be malls etc a large number of services are not going to revive very quickly and as you know services sector is 55% of the gdp so if 55% of the gdp remains uh, low uh then of course the rate of growth will be some like minus 15% at a very optimistic guess so i don't understand people who say it'll be ar- around minus 5% because to get to minus 5% from where we are we would require a 15% rate of growth of the economy between now and the end of the year now <laughs> we already in trouble beforehand you know our rate of growth was slowing down to 3.1% in the la- last quarter of last year uh before the pandemic hit us and suddenly if you if you achieve 15% real growth rate over last year is almost impossible so i think that very optimistically you know our rate of growth would be minus 15% and pessimistically it will be much much worse so therefore the situation is one where the government resources are down government just doesn't have resources it's cutting back uh, on all kinds of expenditures i'm told that uh, ministries have been told to cut their expenditures to 15 to 20% of what they were spending Uh, states like delhi kerala and maharashtra are complaining they don't have money to pay salaries you know and some doctors etc in delhi have not been paid salaries so the mm. crisis in the government is very very deep so money you know the budget has to be immediately reformulated you know, the budget is formulated on the ground that the nominal growth will be 10% but it looks like it's going to be far less so revenues are not going to be what they were yes. and the expenditure sir forgive me for interrupting you but there is a new story we recently about how the finance ministry was considering a payout from the rbi to plug that gap and it turns out that that payout might not even be enough but like you said the concern is not just the fact that the central government has, is is short of cash every state government is short of cash as well because most of the spending on covid was done by the state governments what would this mean for the economy if government spending both state and center uh you know winds down instead of winding so, up right now so you know you are absolutely right the states get a double whammy because you know they get 42% of the resources that the center collects and if the center is collecting less they get less of that and then they get less because the tax payment under gst and other things is, is much less than what uh, is required so they will suffer a double whammy and that's why the states resource position will be very bad and that's why i'm arguing that the budget needs to be reformulated immediately because revenues are down expenditures are up you know because of the covid crisis and therefore it depends on the kind of deficit that we are willing to take if the deficit is very large then borrowing has to take place not only from the reserve bank of india but i think covid bonds need to be floated banks have 8 lakh crores of funds you know which are uh, they are depositing with the rbi those could be tapped through a bond then the wealthy people in the economy they could be tapped you know uh, whether it be through wealth tax or floating a covid bond which the wealthy could uh, subscribe to so there are all kinds of means that need to be uh, looked at you know because the situation is quite dire 
and that's why the sooner we admit the problem and we start doing something about it the better it would be otherwise later on it would be almost impossible to correct the situation the fiscal situation would continue to deteriorate as the economy continues to uh, keep a very slow performance so i think you know the government needs to act urgently unfortunately what the government is doing is taking long term steps rather than short term immediate steps you know for instance in the 20 lakh crore package it had suggested there was supply side uh, of, of, of policy that that going in for like you know changes in isro changes you know vis a vis the atomic <laughs> energy now these are all long term you know it's like saying if my house is on fire then i say that okay i i'm going to now uh, set up a uh, fire station i'm going to you know buy more uh, uh, engines to you know uh, this thing by then the house would be burned so you need to pump in purchasing power right now you know uh, so therefore you know many of the steps that are suggested about credit you know etc those are not going to work until demand revives so that's the yeah. first task that needs to be done um uh, and i'll come back to this because my concern here professor is about the fact that we are entering a very mute festive season and for all businesses festive season is when they hope to make the money so what happens if the festive season remains mute and we'll come back to that point i want to bring in mr ajay bagga mr bagga let me put the market for the last 6 months up on the screen um so please explain to us what is going on in the stock market because i no longer understand what is going on in the stock market we'll see that dip that you can see in around april when the lockdown was announced so you can actually see it dip this was the 23rd of march when we went into lockdown is that sharp dip that you see um post that really nearly the market has more than recovered what it has lost so on one hand we have economists telling us that you know uh, we're going to go back to uh, we're going to lose at least 5 to 10% we heard what professor kumar just told us narai murthy is saying 1947 mangohan singh is saying uh, you know uh, you know long term slow down but the sensex doesn't seem to feel that way would you explain to us what this reaction is to i i wish i knew uh, <laughs> i'll start with that disclaimer because anyone who has seen market cycles is really mm. befuddled and uh, uh, you know we are getting abused on social media every day because i was one of the people who said in march that just stay on the sidelines and don't uh, get into this market so uh, new traders are entering the market and uh, they made money uh, on penny stocks and uh, people are uh, looking like champions but it's the market uh, it's more the global liquidity and the liquidity that rbi put into the system what uh, professor kumar also said uh you know from a deficit uh, on a daily basis we moved to about 6 lakh crores being parked by banks uh, with rbi in the reverse repo and that's gone up to about 7 and a half to 8 lakh crores and that is uh, really showing uh, that the liquidity rbi has taken care of the cut rates so it's more global uh, that uh, uh, we have seen uh, secondly we do say that the markets are forward looking they discount everything very soon Uh, but i don't see uh, a six month recovery i think it's a two years uh, that it will take from april uh, 2020 to come back to 2019 levels it will be a two year grind uh, we might have made one bottom in april uh, when everything went down 80% uh, but it will be more like a w uh, if not an l whereby you know there is a slight recovery uh, halfway through and then there is a sharp fall again uh sometime around november december and then we start uh, grinding up uh, again or it could be an l what happened mm. to japan in 1990 uh you know the japanese auto numbers were the uh, lifetime highs were in 94 they never reached those numbers again so it could even be an l for a substantial number uh, uh, amount of time and that will be disastrous for a poor country like ours we need to grow nominally nominally at 12 to 14% uh with inflation and in real terms at least 7 to 8% is the kind of growth we need to uh, pull people out of poverty and we have lost substantial uh, uh, uh you know uh, substantial distance in that uh, in this period i'm not blaming the government uh, covid nobody could have anticipated but unlike 2008 which was a financial contagion phase which came into the markets and then into main street uh you remember pranab das time 
the fiscal deficit was not looked at. We had a six and a half percent fiscal deficit. The spigots were opened on the bank credit. This time around, deposits are growing up. Bank credit is not growing up. It's very difficult to get bank credit because bankers are also running scared. And we have not recovered uh, from the earlier NPA issues. So RBI numbers are 9% NPAs and going to maybe 14% uh, by this March. That mm. is the kind of number. So, so what you're saying, what you're saying, Mr. Bagra, is that uh, basically the stock market is moving because it reacts to information, it reacts to announcements from the RBI. A lot of people are not, are go so going by what Professor is saying and you're saying, a lot of small businesses are going to shut down. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs. A lot of value is going to be lost from our personal network. We're all going to effectively become poorer. I want to put something on your screen. While the rest of us are getting poorer, and I have a habit of putting Mr. Bagga on a difficult spot every time he comes to the show. While the rest of us are getting poorer, Mr. Bagga, one man has gotten richer by 72. So there you go. How is it that billionaires are becoming richer while the rest of us become poorer? Is there something wrong with the way our economy is structured? No, it's, a, it's classical econ uh, economics. You know, when you make uh, the discounting rate go down so much, the asset holders will do well, Faye. And coming, you know, no, to no, the market. In English, what that means, sir? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you know, I don't want to open my mouth in front of uh, <laughs> Professor Kumar, but you know, I'll give my little, uh, you know, understanding. If you look at the markets, you know, in the last two years, the uh, Nifty uh, uh, has uh, gone up. Uh, uh, you know, ha has shown a minus five percent return over the last two years. Mm -hmm. uh, the mid cap index is minus 26%. The small cap index is minus 47%. So there's been deep destruction over the last two years already going into uh, the uh, COVID. Uh, out of the nifty 5% return, the top 15 stocks, Fay, have given about 40% uh, return. And the next 35 stocks out of the top 50 stocks in the country I've given minus 26 percent return. Mm. So, you know, it has been a very unequal kind of a growth where a few uh, industries or a few uh, uh, asset owners became very rich. It's happened around the world. When the yes. rate, rates go down, uh, mm. you discount the future cash flows on that rate. So when the rates are cut so uh, strongly, as has been happening over the last 12 years since the global recession, a global financial crisis, the asset owners become richer and richer, and the rest of the people who don't own assets, be it stocks, be it real estate, be it gold, anybody not with assets has seen actually wages going down in real terms. So uh, that, in a nutshell, is a market's perspective, but I'm sure mm -hmm. Professor Kumar can explain it much better than me. Professor, uh, do you want to explain to our audience why this particular, why, you know, why this is so un yeah. unequal and unfair? So, you know, uh, what, what's happening is that, you know, uh, people have wealth, uh, they hold a portfolio of assets, you know. Uh, so you may hold real estate, you may hold bank account, you may hold, you know, a stock market, you may go to mutual funds, etc., etc. You know, and you look at where that, uh, you know, your best returns would be. So in the stock market, you know, there's a speculation that goes on, you know, that's the future's expectation that, you know, things will improve. And when they improve, you know, then the prices uh, will go up and therefore you are investing for the future. If you look at the alternate asset, for instance, you know, you look at real estate, it has been down for the last eight years. So that's not a very favorable place to invest in. Uh, you know, you, if you go to the banks, you know, the middle classes, you know, they're getting very low returns. So they don't want to keep money there. These are the trends that have been going on. And as Mr. Bagga has rightly pointed out, the markets have been very narrow, you know, so the money has been funneled into certain, uh, uh, you know, sectors. And now also the money will be funneled into certain sectors. For instance, the pharma sector will do well because of COVID, you know, uh, your telecom sector will do very well because there'll be automation, you know, uh, there'll be FMCG because that's the essential, you know, and therefore FMCG sector will do well. But other sectors, you know, like for instance, airlines will do very poorly, you know, hotels and restaurants will do very poorly. Uh, so you'll have this kind of a narrow thing and funds will be funneled into there. So why Mr. Uh, Ambani is doing very well is because, you know, telecom is doing very well. His Joe mm -hmm. is, you know, trouncing, uh, you know, the other uh, two, you know, they are doing rather poorly. So, you know, it's expected that he would have a huge monopoly 
and the uh, funds from outside are investing in his uh, company whether it be facebook and others you know uh, so that you know they are taking advantage of the fact that they want to get a platform in india and jio would provide a platform so a lot of funds have come in and therefore his company which was uh, you know had a huge debt has now become debt free so many of these factors are there why you know uh, he would be doing very well and some others would also do well because you know that they they hold uh, shares in certain areas which are going to do well so the stock market will see a very differentiated kind of a response where certain sectors will do well other sectors will not do well and because the money will go narrowly into certain sectors those sectors are where the prices would rise so therefore right. that's one second is you know very often the stock market has very little to do with the long term trend of the economy stock market only looks at what's the current possibilities you know uh so you know the, the it it's delink very often from the overall uh, economy so that's what we are seeing again and uh, ask you one question yes yes if, yes, if i could add also you know there is 3 trillion dollars sitting with private equity guys which is not allocated so you know uh, around uh, march i was asked this question will startups start folding up i said some of them will but a large portion not the starting starting startups but which are already in series b c who have got some money already who are in uh, got some business they will do very well and that is what we have seen those valuations have held up the blackstones the brookfields are buying our infrastructure because they believe that overall the country will do well in a long term uh, scenario given the young population given the dynamics all that so there is a lot of money still chasing asset space and yes. but it, it is a very narrow band like in the us if you take out the top 6 fangs the technology companies the rest of the market has not performed the fangs are bigger than the japanese uh, market's market cap it is back to 1989 i remember i just started working and uh, the tokyo imperial palace real estate was more valuable than the california real estate the japan real estate was more valuable than american real estate never the nikkei came back to that level but the japanese uh, government ensured that the uh, bad loans on the japanese banks were never uh, accounted for and slowly they bailed them out over 10 years this is the japanification of the global economy that's happening now the counter hey. Measure to it is counter cyclical measures, which has to be physical. Monetary has done its heavy lifting. RBI policy is also saying how much more rate will they cut? The savers are suffering. Anybody who retired who thought I'll get seven and a half eight percent today, I'm getting so many calls from uncles and aunts who are saying I've got five percent. How do I live on this? And I'm taking them to senior citizen uh, scheme. This that uh, mutual fund you are not trusting. Yeah, a credit yeah. fund. You don't know what will happen. A Templeton will happen again. These are the real issues that we are facing. Absolutely. And uh, for our viewers, of course, if you have questions, please use the super chat feature to ask your questions and to support us financially. Taking this back to Professor uh, Arun Kumar, Professor Kumar, we had a very muted uh, Janmashtami. We're going into now Ganesh Puja. It's going to very likely also be muted, and then Diwali, uh, the Sera and Diwali. uh do you expect a muted festive season and what will that lead to will it lead to a second wave of job cuts are more and more people going to lose jobs in november december january so you're right you know in fact the recent consumer confidence survey of the rbi showed that consumer confidence is down way down business confidence is also way down so the business sentiment is down which means investment is not going to revive in any very big way uh, especially if you have capacity under utilization why would somebody invest if i as maruti can produce 100 cars but i'm selling only 50 then why would i try and raise capacity to you know 110 so my investment would not rise you know and already before you know last year october rbi survey had shown that capacity utilization is down to 70% and that would have fallen even further now capacity utilization after the lockdown so therefore investment would be down consumer confidence is down because large number of people in the unorganized sector they have lost employment and lot of people in the organized sector have also lost employment and including you know for instance pay cuts like in the media there have been uh, severe pay cuts you know for a large number of people and similarly in various other organized sectors so both organized sector and unorganized sector have lost incomes and therefore the consumer expense will be down second is when there is an uncertainty people do not do discretionary expenditure 
they only do essential expenditure. So discretionary expenditure may take place a little bit in June and July because of the pent up demand, but that's going to taper off because people are not worried uh, what income would they have left, you know, to do their normal uh, thing. So in other words, I don't expect the boom to take place in the festive season. Uh, I expect that it will remain muted and because capacity utilization should be low, therefore investment would again further decline and therefore the economy would not be able to pick up as was expected by people who said that, you know, this uh, uh, festive season demand would go up and therefore, you know, things would uh, revive. So overall, you know, demand problem is very severe and because of lockdown taking place in various parts because our cases are rising, therefore, you know, there is supply constraint also. So this is a unique situation which the world economy is not faced earlier where supply is constrained and demand is less. You know, earlier, you know, when the business cycles took place, it was a demand problem, not a supply problem. Now you have both supply and demand. So it's a very new situation. And then Professor, very new... quickly, because I know you have to leave. So I have going to very quickly ask you this question. A inflation, retail inflation numbers came out yesterday. Um, and India's retail inflation for July was 6.93. Food inflation was 10%. Now, I don't understand this from basic, from the economic, economics we learned in college. When there's no demand right now, how is it that prices are still climbing? And how are families going to run their kitchens at this rate? So, you know, I think we have to, again, disaggregate, you know, uh, when people don't have incomes, then they're not purchasing many items. The consumption basket has changed. You know, I've been writing in EPW that the consumption basket has changed and therefore the weights have to be uh, done differently. Essential goods prices have risen because there are shortages in the urban areas. But the non-essential items, you know, there, there are discounts, you know, and those are not getting counted because the weights have changed. And in the rural areas, you see that the food prices have declined. You know, the farmers are not getting the MSP. Uh, fruits and vegetables have rotted because they have not been able to come to the mandis. So you have this twin problem of the rural areas, the farmers' incomes declining. In the urban areas, the you know urban consumers they face a price increase. You know, the price increase that is being shown by this thing. So I think you know we need to disaggregate, and our inflation numbers also need to be redone to really account for the fact that our you know consumption basket has changed. So it's this consumption basket effect that you know has not been captured fully. But I think usually what happens when the economy is down is that there's a problem of deflation rather than inflation because commodity prices begin to decline. We saw petroleum goods prices decline dramatically in uh, March, April. They have risen a little bit, but other commodities also, you know, whether it be steel and other things, because the demand is down, their prices will be also down. So when the commodity prices go down, then the manufactured goods prices also go down. And there's a, a problem of deflation. When deflation takes place, then both investment and consumption suffer. So I'm more worried about the fact that if the demand remains down, there may be a deflation uh, more than you know uh, inflation. So effectively, what we're looking at is a situation where food prices have gone up because of shortage of supply. People are losing their jobs, which means families are spending less and less on discretionary things. So they're buying the basic food, but they're not buying new clothes, they're not buying new shoes, they're not buying white goods, any of these things that would be discretionary. And that is possibly going to lead to a further spiraling slowdown unless so the government... Say, I, I, I would not say not buying, I'd say buying less. Buying less. Yes, I think, you know, to be accurate, because, you know, yes. after all, some uh, purchases are taking place, you know, shops oh. are reopening, malls are reopening, but, you know, they're not buying like what they were buying last year. And we are headed towards a new normal. Like one of my neighbors who's a very well, well off person, he said, Arun, why do we need to spend so much? Why do we need to go to malls? And why do we need to eat outside? You know, we can do very well within. So even the well off sections are not going out, not spending like they were spending earlier. People are traveling much less, you know, because of the fear. So airlines are suffering, you know, travel and tourism is suffering, etc. And all that is reacting back. So for instance, because hotels and restaurants are not doing well. So there's an excess supply of milk, there's an excess supply of eggs. You know, because the rural areas, the midday meal scheme is not being operational. So the demand for milk and for eggs has gone down. And therefore, those prices, you know, are softening, you know. So th there is a whole range of things that is happening in the economy. So essential goods are in short supply. Their prices will uh, go up. But the non-essential, I think there'll be discounts and there'll be their prices will go down. And yet the demand will not pick up because of the consumer confidence being down. And, and the only solution to this is for the government to step up, do something, and action money into the hands of people? Is that what we're waiting yes. for? Large so, scale government so, spending? Yes. So, you know, we need to ramp up the rural employment guarantee scheme in a big way. So the large number of people who have migrated there, even earlier, you know, only 45 days out of 100 days of work was being provided under the rural employment guarantee scheme. 
now within the first two three months their money is exhausted so instead of additional funds of 40000 crores what was required was some like 4 lakh crores to be given to the rural employment guarantee scheme you know that would have pumped in purchasing power then we need to pump in purchasing power into the urban areas also there is a lot of urban unemployment also so something akin to the urban uh, guarantee scheme also needs to be there so that you know the poor people when they begin to get incomes they would spend because they are not savers they have to spend on the essentials when that expenses yes. takes place then the demand would begin to revive it will not revive immediately but revive slowly and it will begin to affect the middle classes also the workers in the other areas and that would then help them right right professor i know that you need to leave because you have another appointment so thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us thank i have you. a question for mr ajay bagga from uday kiran uday kiran says in my capacity as a common man and an idiot at economics what can i do to insulate myself from what is happening is there anything that can be done very clearly you know fe uh, you and i when we used to uh, do a lot of financial planning shows we used to say keep 6 months of emergency savings last yes. four months at every forum i'm saying keep two years of emergency savings so right now we talk of three buckets that you have to fill one is your emergency bucket second is your investment bucket third is your dream bucket forget your dreams dreams two years we have to forget investments pull out money and keep it in your emergency bucket because things are going to get very bad uh, over the next six months globally uh, and unless governments act very resolutely we'll see much worse i had a friend in delhi fe in the night uh, three guys came they've cut the grills and walked into his house and ransacked the whole house the whole household was in one room and the police came and said you know these are not criminals these are unemployed people because they didn't hurt you they were only after the money and they were skilled guys they knew how to cut a grill they brought those machines cut the grills and they just escaped they didn't hurt anybody they just wanted money and that's a trend that's happening you will see criminalization because of unemployment you the only way out is counter cyclical measures the private industry will not invest now because they are not using their existing capacity private consumption you and i will not go and buy a new car or a new house we will conserve our money what has to come in is government expenditure globally yes. governments yes. have to spend on public works uh, like what keynes said in the great depression uh, dig up holes fill up holes if you have nothing else to do in india we have so much infrastructure to make we can make roads we can do large public works and give daily employment to people and then it will trickle up the whole uh, money will start trickling up as people consume that's the only way out there is no easy way out Well, there are some jokes happening on the chat window where someone says "dream bucket" is now being emptied down the drain, and somebody else said, "No, we will just rename our dream bucket emergency bucket two." <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good so, idea. I know. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a good idea. Six months of savings is always important. If you haven't done it right now, six months of your expenses. So find out how much you need to get through the month. and that into 6 needs to be in a separate account which is there in case you lose your job or you have to take a pay cut so it gives you a window really to figure out what to do next um and of course uh, mr bagga giving us this is a very uh, you know a very serious call normally in my opinion of many many years of uh, doing financial planning shows people don't say take out the money from your investments then keep it in your account i very rarely hear that advice so when you say take out money from your investments mr bakra do you mean sell the stocks and the mutual funds right now is that the investment we're talking about or fixed deposits what are we talking about yeah so one is if you have an inflow every month uh, restrict your expenses and build up to a two year uh, level of expenditure if you, if your ex, uh, you know job is gone or your cash flow is gone look at this pay 6 lakh uh, msmes in india or uh, 2 lakhs didn't have 2 months of cash uh, available to survive another 2 lakhs had only 4 months you know what has happened we don't know we don't have data but i am uh, you know uh, wondering at least 40% hotels would have gone bankrupt because hotels operating margin was about 10% and uh, if you don't operate you're gone uh you can't survive more than 2 to 3 months then the landlord doesn't get the rent uh the electricity you are not uh, using all the people who were employed there so it becomes a vicious circle the way to break a vicious circle and start a virtuous circle 
government step in it's very it's 100 year old theory it's not you can't do 21 lakh crores and put it all into medium term and long term projects you have to put money today into people's pockets and then that i mean if us can do it the pure capitalist usa sent checks of 1200 dollars to 150 million people out of 300 million in the population only the children and the uh, very well to do did not get that check 1200 dollars was credited to all 30 million people were getting 600 dollars every week 250 billion was put into the economy that is the and still they degrew 33% still that economy fell 33% yeah. imagine what is going to happen to us so it's a wake up thing and if around you it's not happening at least you conserve your capital i'm saying we will build can, up can we'll, gold mr bagga can gold be used as a good hedge because if you look at the price of gold it's fluctuated quite a bit as well so how I know that people like to use gold as an option, but is that something that uh, you would recommend? I would recommend, but it won't go up in the next month or two months. What is happening, Fay? Gold has a very strong relation to the interest rate, and mm-hmm. over the last week, the U.S. interest rate went up. You know, about ten basis points, point one percent. The interest rate went up uh, for whatever reason, and we saw the gold correction. so uh, i'm not seeing gold going up for the next uh, month or two months but overall it's a good hedge next year inflation strikes us strongly and uh, if you are having gold it will at least beat inflation so some portion we say about 5 to 10% of the portfolio can be held in gold All right, uh, Mr. Baga. Let me just check and see if there are other questions for you right now. But I want to thank you for spending time with us this evening and answering all of those questions. Very clear, uh, you know, uh, advice from Mr. Baga. Obviously, things are going to get worse before they get better. For as long as you don't see the government and announce a big spending package, which includes putting money in the hands of the poorest people, so jandan transfers directly into people's bank accounts as far as possible, uh, big infrastructure projects, massive spending. Uh, unless we see something like this being announced you have to assume that things are going to get worse so right now what are we doing we're trying to guard our own families and our own homes and you do that by putting money aside even if you feel and if one of the three or four people in this country who feel that your job is not at risk one of those people will be mukesh ambani but the rest of the other three people if you feel your job is not at risk even then conserve capital at this point set aside money and try to shore up your finances as far as possible mr bakar there was an announcement also of transfers that the government has done into the hands of farmers do you see that as something that will help that has helped it has helped a lot that 59000 crores which has gone in ayushman bharat has helped so uh, and tomorrow in the august 15th uh, speech we are uh, hoping for a digital health card so government has done uh, good work but it is still very little you know for the scale of the problem uh, because you can't blame the industrialist or you and i fay if you shut down the economy and what has happened you know when i was studying uh, economics in uh, school and college professor krishna raj used to call it hindu uh, rate of growth we have come back to sub hindu rate of growth second we had the license permit quota raj what has happened with the pandemic is the local policeman decides if i can open the factory today or not you know so all the 1991 big bang reforms where manmohan singh removed the license permit quota raj that has come back to strike the manufacturer at the local level the uh, shopkeeper the beat policeman who was already extracting a lot of rents from the shopkeeper now comes and says oh uh, three people are standing together close your shop otherwise pay me this much amount you know that has come back very strongly and that will not go off in a rush you can't uh, uh, you know the government can't be standing at every shop every industry only way out is large public expenditures don't look at the fiscal deficit that is blown for the world you think us can look at it there is no way they have to say when you shut down my industry it is because of the government action the government has to take action to yes. safeguard that industry today if they leave it to market forces what has happened unfortunately the pure capitalist us is working like a socialist uh, country 
giving lot of safety nets and the socialist india is working like pure capitalism fay has to survive on her own and pay her salaries and generate ads when there is nobody advertising you are left to pure capitalism when the problem is created by the covid and the government lockdown uh, post that but so where did i go wrong that yeah. nobody is answering is there a solution yes government expenditure there is no other solution the only solution is government expenditure so we look at the government right now saurabh savant thank you for the support also thank you for the support uh, from uh, uday kiran for asking those questions and for uh, we had a really good turnout today we are over 350 people watching so that's fantastic mr banga always a pleasure to chat with you i wish you, you very good luck in these extremely uncertain times hopefully everyone comes out on the other side and survives i think that's the important part hunker down keep your head down and just to survive this very difficult uh, period um, you know that's coming in um That, that's where we are. Bharat Rawal has just popped in saying, "You don't have a problem if you don't admit there's a problem." So the government solution to a economic crisis, where we need to first admit that there is a problem, and then look at a solution. Well said. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us, to our audience and to our guest. Remember, guys, stay safe, stay at home, stay safe, and look after your money because nobody else is going to do it for you. Thanks for watching. Good night. Thank you, Prem.